Let's get into the big topic of open source. Something that we actually have to run. This is so we awesome. Are an open culture that it is actually in a big piece of that process that a developer or let's say a As the Kubernetes ecosystem really boomed. Hey, Randy, hey, I think we can't, yeah, we can't hear you. Hey, Randy, can you hear us? One more time. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. that was good. Yeah, so let's try it again. Good morning. <laughs> good evening. You've made it to the level up hour. I've made it to the level up hour too. Um, we have a great episode for you today uh, and a great guest. We have Daniel O, who is the senior principal developer advocate. And uh, Jafar, what is Daniel going to be talking about today? Uh, that's a good uh, question. I actually have no idea what this uh, Quarkus thing is. So uh, I think yeah, he's going to. Tell us a bit more about that. So, right, Daniel, so, th th thanks for joining us and, and yeah, for uh, sure. introducing yeah. this good, great topic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thanks for uh, uh, thanks for inviting me and thanks for having me, Randy and Japar. So, yeah, once again, my name is Daniel O. I'm a developer advocate and technical marketing major at Runtime's team at Red Hat. So, Quarkus is a uh, Kubernetes native Java framework. So you probably know if you have any experience or Java application development before. So people say Java is pretty old and too heavy way to run application on Kubernetes. But the answer is yes or no, because the Java and a similar uh, relevant Java framework uh, were born for Kubernetes. It's almost 26 years ago, 27 years ago, Java was born. And then uh, the lot of language platform try to fit it in the uh, Kubernetes workload, like uh, optimization and lightweight and scalability, electricity, a lot of stuff. Thing. And the Quarkus was designed to fix that the old Java framework problem, high uh, performance and a small memory footprint and a super fast startup and response time because the old Java framework was designed for like a bare metal virtual machine rather than container environment. And the Quarkus was born after Kubernetes, which means we definitely consider about Kubernetes stuff. So all the feature benefit and the value of Quarkus, we 100% support the Kubernetes native stuff. So this is the Quarkus stuff. I'm gonna review more fun stuff today with a live demo. So yeah, it should be fun. Oh, that's that, right. that's that's very nice. Thanks for this uh, nice intro. And so, uh, uh, in, in fact, yeah, if we look at uh, some of the most recent languages, when we talk about these uh, new technologies like uh, Go and Node.js, they they appear to be like more fit for uh, or better fit for uh, these cloud native uh, type of uh, applications. That requires scalability, etc. But uh, as you say, uh, thanks to Quarkus and the engineering effort that have been made, uh, Java is still relevant as a language for those type of workloads. Except that instead of having to uh, re-own um, uh, the, you know, uh, or or acquire. Uh, that experience with new languages, or well, not necessarily new languages, but I mean, Java relatively. has been here, yeah, relatively new in the enterprise world, uh, at least. So you can have your Java experts, but they are now more relevant in the Kubernetes native ecosystem and, and, and such things. 
Well, yeah. so, I mean, there's a huge, there's a huge JEE footprint out there in the world and yeah. a lot of developers conversant in that, but there's that on-ramp that's needed from the world that once was to the world that everybody wants to get to now. And, and I sort of interpret Quarkus as that on-ramp that allows that huge Java install base to get to a newer framework, a newer way of doing things. Would that be a, a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, so, so you know, so there are more than fifteen million Java developers out there, like around the world, and they actually working developing new application for business requirement every single day. We cannot ignore them. Even they have to deploy existing application or a new Microsoft application on Kubernetes, they still want to keep their career path with their own skill set. Rather than okay, you gotta go to run JavaScript or Go program language, that should be a big burden for them, big challenge for them. So if we could let them keep using their own Java skill set, not just only for existing application, but also new Microsoft application on Kubernetes, it would be fantastic. That is a ultimate goal. We design Quarkus, and then there are so many. Uh, company and individual contributor jump into uh, Quarkus uh, open source project and then make it better every single day. That that's really nice. And so if we look at the so you you spoke about like the old ways of uh, creating applications or we we tend to call those uh, legacy applications, but uh, we know that there are some uh, new types of architectures like microservices based architecture, even driven uh, serverless and this type of uh, new uh, new approaches or new uh, arch architectures. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how Quarkus fits into this new new era of uh, uh, you know, these new types of uh, architectures? Absolutely, that's a really good question. So I gotta, you know, so this this week actually I'm staying in DevOps Poland, and the mm -hmm. first day the DevOps Poland I already uh, spoke a lot of developer. It's a hundred percent genuine Java developers. They really uh, concerned about like event driven application as well as just suffer less on Kubernetes. So mm -hmm. previously Java framework. So for example, Spring Spring Boot, and then you, if you wanted to develop reactive application for event driven architecture, you might need to use Spring Reactive, which means a totally different architecture and API, bunch of stuff. You need to learn something new, or you need to rewrite an existing application. Even you still uh, provide the same business capability, but they should be uh, handled by reactive and event driven application. So this is one of the big burden for Java developers. And the Quarkus provide very flexible uh, features and dependency and extension. So for example, Quarkus was born based on uh, reactive programming, but still Quarkus allows developers to have the imperative application like uh, just request response to HTTP protocol, et cetera. But we, if you just add one single annotation like uh, incoming, outgoing, and then your Java method will be treat, uh, handled by reactive application automatically because behind the scene, Quarkus will take care of that kind of stuff instead of uh, developers' uh, hands on stuff. And also, when you packaging your application as a container, like a Docker or a Podman, and they deploy to Kubernetes as uh, serverless, or you just deploy to Amazon Lambda, and then each star maybe uh, five seconds to start up as part of the core to star strategy. It takes some time, which means your end user, oh, I don't see any uh, web web content, like a just white blank page. Oh, it's sometimes something uh, happening in my server. So it kind of some incident, incident, incident. So in order to fix the problem, the partners, uh provide the two feature uh, comparison to the developer. One is just uh, creating job file, like a, the running on JVM. The other one is the Quarkus now Java developer to have a native comparison, which means you just create an executable file, like an ESC file on Windows server system, and they're just running on it without JVM. But big benefit from native comparisons, you 
have a superstar, super fast startup time. I'm gonna uh, just try to showcase in the, my demo uh, just a little bit later. And then the memory footprint is super tiny. And then end user perspective, they even cannot recognize my application actually scale down and uh, scale up immediately. So you maybe uh, get rid of your core to start problem, any serverless platform like Amazon Lambda, Azure Function, or on-prem Kubernetes Kinetic. That, that, that's a very nice uh, feature, uh, and I, I'm I'm willing to learn a bit more and see how it works uh, during the demo. But so if I understand correctly, what you're saying here is that we can have. So is it the same uh, code base that we can run in different uh, ways? So one being run in a traditional JVM, uh, but still having a you know smaller footprint, um, you know than a Java traditional uh, application and we can choose to have it as a native executable that is compiled as a you know binary uh, but it's the same code base or does it require adaptation uh, somewhere yeah uh, it, it is totally same code base so okay. there are a couple of tools like a maven or gradle or quarter cli so you mm -hmm. just uh, just pass down one parameter like a dash dash native which allows you packaging same source code to different uh, artifacts like a job file on JVM or executable file for native comparison. Okay. And so you're going to show us those. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do. Okay, cool. And so what does it use? Uh, uh, so, yeah, I think I know the answer, but um, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's good to explain what technology enables this native compilation and and what's the difference I would say between a traditional uh, compilation that is targeting uh, JVM and you know anything that we strip out yep. uh, when doing binary compilation for instance yeah so uh, I'm going to repeat it that kind of answer during my demo but here's a quick short okay. answer. So in a traditional way, uh, you're going to just packaging the job file and running on JVM based on uh, just in time uh, compile strategy. So mm -hmm. you're just creating a job file, like an immediate code and running on JVM. And then, but the uh, native comparison, we, uh, we uh, took deeper on approach to compile application based on ahead of time uh, build strategy. So we put in the old kind of uh, dependency library and the old kind of stuff. Just like imagine really similar concept when you can uh, create a container image, you can put in the old uh, required thing like application and runtime or some dependency. You can package in one image file and then you run that image in any container platform from your local and the remote Kubernetes, even AKS or EKS because your container is already has all, all required uh, dependency and runtime application itself. So we got a similar thing in the when you packaging native executable file. We print all kind of stuff, and then and running on uh, Grab VM. Uh, technically, is sub uh, tray VM to run that application. It's totally different than uh, the, the general Java virtual machine, and then yeah. this is a big different thing in native comparison versus. Uh, the traditional uh, Java uh, jar compilation. Okay. Okay. Cool. So uh, yeah. So what what it does basically, if I understand correctly, is that instead of having things happen when the application is running in the J JVM with things like dynamic class loading and stuff like that, it's happening yep. ahead of time during build. During the build, and we are optimizing the, the dependencies, everything is put in there. And yep. once the application is running, it's only like 100% efficiency. There is no, oh, I need this, and then I'm going to pull it, uh, uh, etc. cetera. Yep. yep, that's correct. OK, very good. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, how do you want to proceed from here? Uh, I don't know how long the demo is going uh, to take, but uh, do you want to go and show us some things, and then yeah. we 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 have uh, other questions afterwards? 
Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I got a bunch of the demo today, but just feel free to chime in and interrupt me anytime if something comes up. And I just stopped the demo, and then because I have already uh, published a lot of them on my YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm gonna share okay. my screen first, and then uh, just real quick. Okay, yes, yeah, so you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, That's perfect. Good. So, so today demo really we talk about the zero to hero in the Kubernetes native Java thing. So as I said, I'm developer advocate and Red Hat, and then you guys bunch of the. Uh, Contact information on my Twitter and the binding URL Daniel TV and uh, uh, my uh, Git repository. Just feel free to uh, uh, steal any source code from my Git repository. So here's a one slide for uh, today. I'm going to really talk about and showcase like a live demo thing. So the podcast was born after Kubernetes, and then we got a bunch of stuff uh, how to make your daily life better and easier. So for example, we minimize the uh, dependency when you run a Java application and small memory footprint and then super fast startup time and response time. And we also have a bunch of the Kubernetes extension. Also, you can understand uh, one of the uh, maybe dependency. And then we put in the that kind of stuff. So it will arouse Java developer uh, in, incorporate uh, Kubernetes manifesto. For example, if you want to refer to Kubernetes secret or config map, you just put in the that kind of uh, uh, key and value into your application properly file or YAML file. It automatically corpus to bind uh, your information from config map or secret into your application like a reference thing. So there are more uh, deployed Kubernetes and how. Uh, make it easier, uh, change or evolve your application as a serverless application on Kubernetes or or uh, any serverless platform. So, so I'm going to try to uh, get to my demo thing. Okay, so here's one more oh, thing. That, that, that's not guitar, by the way. I don't know if it's yours, but... Uh... What's that? So, can you see my screen still? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so here's your Quarkus.io. Uh, maybe I'm going to do a little bit to me. Okay, here's your Quarkus.io. Anyone uh, interested in uh, Quarkus stuff after this webinar? So just feel free to go to Quarkus.io. You can find all resources. So we have just released Quarkus to 10. And then uh, you can find the guest study and guide. And then when you go to guide, you have uh, so many uh, different use cases how to get started Quarkus application, like uh, getting started, a reactive application. and uh, how to build a native executable file. And then like a, when you click on like a cloud and then you can find that there are so many uh, Kubernetes stuff here. So how to deploy Kubernetes, how to uh, connect to uh, like a messaging broker and so many stuff here. And then you can also click and start coding just like a Spring Initializer. It's the, you can start application uh, uh, creating project here. You can check in whatever you need dependency and the create to generate the application it automatically download the zip file and you just extract and then just starting your application. But today I'm going to really be, uh, try to use a different way. So I'm going to use a Quarkus CLI and then Quarkus CLI uh, allows me uh, to make it shorter like a Maven command line or grad command line and then it allows me to more uh, the developer experience, good experience. So, so for example, I'm going to create a new Quarkus uh, project, like a Quarkus, uh, create a new application, for example, project name, uh, Cube-Dash native Java. And it automatically creates a new project as a red bunch of stuff, like a Maven wrapper, and then uh, some Docker file in case you packaging application as a container image and deploy Kubernetes. And also their sample application. So I'm going to open uh, my uh, project using uh, my ID tool, which is the VS Code. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Just let me know. So, so v VS Code yeah. supports Java as well? Uh, VS Code is open source tool, ID tool, like uh, the IntelliJ or Eclipse. Uh, yeah, so you can yeah. usually uh, use VS Code for Java application development, but also you can use this to any application development, like a JavaScript, Go, and Python, or PHP. 
yeah so i guess that that was the red hat extension that allows you know for better support um, yeah yeah absolutely so i actually use quarkus extension here and also you can add like an open shift uh connector here for example once you add the open shift extension you can find open shift logo here and then once you click on here you can uh go to uh Log in OpenShift the cluster and then deploy OpenShift directly. For example, behind the scene, this is actually not related to Quarkus, but you can create uh, any uh, resources on OpenShift the cluster as well as Kubernetes, uh, like a uh, like a like a service or a deployment, etc. Okay, nice. so here's my application just uh, generated. And then when you go to a Java uh, directory, and then here's my sample application, like a just hello world, like a, a API a RESTful endpoint, hello, and the return hello from REST is reactive. This is what I'm saying. So Quarkus built in reactive application by default. So that's why the just sample application less easy reactive, and then go to Palm XML. And then uh, this is the uh, 29.2. A little bit, uh, I did my Quarkus CLI uh, a little bit older version, but today, uh, this morning, we released a new one. So once I upgrade my Quarkus CLI, it automatically uh, generates race one, like a 210. Okay, so here's a uh, Palm XML if you are familiar with the Maven project. And then here's a one uh, extension, uh, REST Easy. This uh, Maven dependency uh, makes my application, Java application, uh, handle uh, by reactive application. So always first thing is a Quarkus thing. So you just run Quarkus application as dev mode, which is a totally differentiator than any other Java framework. So when you run the Quarkus application as dev mode, and then you can keep changing application, we can say a live coding mode, and whenever you change the application, it automatically recompile, rebuild, and restart your runtime environment automatically. It totally accelerates your developer uh, productivity as a part of the in-order development process. So as you see, the, your application is running. When you uh, press uh, W from it in the runtime environment, it automatically opens your browser, and this is a red page. And then so when you click on the endpoint hello, and then you can see your hello endpoint, and then go back to terminal, and then I'm gonna open new terminal, and then uh, maybe I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and then just try to local host. I like your hello. prompt. Yeah. Do you have any question? No, I was just saying I like your prompt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In your terminal that. window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So here's just the same thing. And then one of the uh, one of the, the beauty of the Quarkus for developer actually when you go to here uh, it's too big okay visit dev UI this is a, one of the uh, great feature for developer showcase the graphical uh, way of what kind of dependency you actually pulled in so for example they are already pulled in uh, as part of the uh, framework level and also developer level and also their computation editor. When you add a new configuration into your application property file, it automatically will be shown up here. And then when you change it here, it automatically changes your local file system at the same time. One good thing is you can just figure out what kind of dependencies I already uh, have on my application. Sometimes you forgot it and then you try to add the same dependency like a duplication you got some error, maybe some kind of you have duplicate dependency with a different version, which is sometimes uh, called some kind of unexpected error. So go back to dev UI. And then one thing interesting in the terminal window, and here you can see the press R resume testing. When you press R, it uh, kicking off continual testing capability. Everybody's saying, uh, test-driven development is super important thing uh, for developer as well as the QA team. But a lot of developers just skip it because I don't even have time to set it on my continual testing environment. Instead, we have a, a, such a great uh, CI CD pipeline. 
But the problem is just sometimes the developer uh, still human, which means you got some error or a mistake on your local file system, and then just push that code into Git repository. And then uh, due to the, your fantastic CI CD pipeline, that application automatically packaging and deployed to Kube, uh, production environment based on Kubernetes in the next five minutes. We can say there's a time bomb. It will be just boom after five minutes and maybe sometimes uh, ruin the entire system because the application properly or the code only working on your local environment. So if you, you could have like a continued testing capability on your local file system, you, you, you don't have any chance to ruin the entire system on Kubernetes as well. So you can see all testing in just path. When you go back to dev UI, and then uh, you can open uh, here command. You see the read the read UI. You can see the same uh, logs, and then you can see the old test result is just success. So what if we go back to uh, ID tool and go back to here, and let's change the uh, return code like a uh, uh, welcome to. Uh, Level up our with Kubernetes, Java, and workers. Okay, I just save a file and then back to the terminal. And then you gotta add a instantly. And then when you go back, go to here. So here, just uh, uh, the actual, actual the return code. Did I just change the code? Like, uh, welcome to level of hour with the Kubernetes, Java, and workers. But they expected it here because when I go back to my application, here to my test directory, I already put the test case here. So test case is, is uh, expecting this result or original one. So uh, one thing when you go to dev UI, and then you can see the same error here. So you don't you didn't anything uh, for continuous testing, it automatically showed up, oh, you got some error you just uh, fail your continual testing like a test driven development. So this is a really good feature uh, in like out of box on your framework, Java framework. So I just copy this thing and I back to IDE and then I just change that. Okay, and uh, here we go. Let's save a file. In the back of the UI, it automatically succeed, and then back to the terminal, and it goes down, and you can find that it already succeeded. But in the meantime, I didn't even try to recompile or rebuild, and even restart my application at that time. It automatically uh, just happening, just like a JavaScript. It never happened in a Java world, but for Quarkus, this is one of the good, uh, really good thing for Quarkus uh, for Java developer. So. This yeah. is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say this is a, a really nice feature because, you know, uh, the, the inner loop or, you know, the, the making it the, the time between your modification and the result shorter is really important for developers. And this is like just amazing uh, in the Java world to have that capability like this. Well, you know, you're at you're at DevOps Poland, and you think about the you know so many of the premises that have come in with DevOps and the idea of pushing you know lots of changes out continually. That's actually where you start to hit a wall with with traditional Java. Is how would you even do something like that sometimes? Whereas this is kind of the answer because here we're taking a relatively trivial change. And it's operationally as trivial as the change itself. It, it literally just goes in without a lot of the other, you know, things that have to happen every time such a change is made in the traditional Java world. So that's that's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. That's the equivalent or of hot reload or something like that. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah that's a really good point. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got a, I got a, some hands-on workshop uh, this Friday. I'm, I'm going to definitely bring this up as already well to suffer less and a lot of speaking <coughs> with the workers. So, so next step, uh, I'm going to a little bit more showcase. So well, we're going to deploy this application Kubernetes, but so one of the big challenges for developer before he they de deploy application to Kubernetes 
So a lot of enterprise application is not standalone. There should be communicate with these, some other external service, for example, database. And then, mm -hmm. so for example, even Kubernetes, so a lot of people try to use a post-SQL database uh, for store your business data. And then, so how to handle developer? Oh yeah, so most likely I don't have enough resources to install database on my local system. So maybe I prefer to refer to external database or I most likely try to use in-memory database like H2 database. But sometimes uh, there are some gap technology stack between in-memory database and production database based on post-SQL post uh, into production environment. So Quarkus actually solved that problem with the dev services. So I'm gonna add a few more extension here to JDBC PostSQL and Hibernate ORM. So Hibernate ORM uh, is uh, some kind of ORM mapper uh, between your actual database schema and your the portal Java beans. And then Panache is to make it easier uh, for Java developer to uh, creating data transaction and then like a DDL, DML based on Hibernate ORM. And the rest is easy React with Jackson is uh, process and consume and produce your JSON file uh, based on reactive application. So I'm just trying to use uh, Coursera. You can actually uh, add that kind of so uh, I'm going to change my uh, right directory and then you just run the core Coursera. You can actually add the, the kind of XML stuff into Palm XML directly. So when you go back to uh, here, core Coursera, and then you can see the Quarkus automatically stop and then try to restart. In the meantime, you can see here is a container image automatically start because the, we edited like a JDBC uh, extension, which he allows to Quarkus to spin up a container image based on test container. So just contain, uh, try to uh, dock a process. You can see post SQL just start up and test container automatically start up. When you stop the dev seat, the Quarkus dev mode, it automatically terminated uh, existing running container image. So you don't need to uh, Docker CRI, you don't have, you don't need to do uh, Podman CRI. It's automatic startup for developer. And as long as you have container runtime, like a Docker, Podman, et cetera. Okay, so when I go back to dev UI and then dev services, and now you can see the Quarkus automatically set it up your own computation uh, for uh, database, like a password, and uh, here's the DB kind, and the JDBC connection, and then here's the username. And then it's automatically fantastic because when you go back to my ID tool, and then here is my uh, resources and application property, there's nothing in there, just empty. But Quarkus automatically set it up by default. Uh, because the Quarkus expect, oh, you added a JDBC uh, related extension, which means uh, you're gonna start like uh, add like a business requirement, uh, how to uh, store uh, your business data into database. So let me try to add a, a real quick, uh, some interesting application here. For example, uh, like a person Java for my entity. So I'm gonna expand uh, the Panache, Entity here, and then I'm gonna make it this Java class like an entity here, and then maybe you can actually uh, cacheable for high performance thing, and then I'm gonna uh, create a, uh, just a few uh, Java attributes which is the same thing to uh, your database schema and the field. Uh, let's say like a string, like a name, and also public string and then address. That's it. I just set it to you. And then the fundamental operation, for example, find the all data or the retrieve all data, which you normally for Java developer define and implement the kind of operation to uh, retrieve your database. But the panache based on Hibernate ORM are wrapping and you know, abstract that kind of fundamental operation for Java developer. So you have a pre uh, shorter Java class with the same uh, functionality. So I just stop and then back to the resources of file. I mean, let me try to add a few more uh, 
the job method here, like the game method, and then uh, like a new path, for example, like a person, and then uh, let's say try to uh, produce a media type. I'm going to try to use the case of format here. And then uh, the method name, probably uh, like a, uh, we're going to try to uh, return the list of the person and like a list all, just reach for all data from database. And then I'm going to return and the person and list all. That's it. This is all uh, just to uh, list all kind of job ITO. Okay, so that's it. Let's try to uh, create another method here, the same thing. But I'm going to try to find one specific uh, data based on IDE, and then which will return one person Java class. And then let's say find the by ID. And here is my uh, long type ID, and then find by ID. This is uh, the fundamental operation also defined automatically uh, from the Panache based on the Hibernate ORM, so which you may really cool. So I just uh, created two RESTful API. One is a person, the other person, and then ID parameter. And then and let's uh, try and so to, yeah. Do we ahead. have a list all, uh function in uh, the person class? No, actually, when you go to person, and then I don't need to create the find all, find by ID or uh, list all uh, method here, because the we just extend panache, and the panache enemy okay. actually based on the panache base, and then it actually provides the bunch of the uh, fundamental operation, like uh, how to store data, how to create data, and how to delete it, and how to find it. We can find this kind oh, okay. of stuff. Yeah, it's all abstraction. So one of the good nice. features of the corpus. And then I hear the uh, import as SQL file. So maybe I'm going to add uh, some of the data here. Ins insert into uh, the person values and the first the ID, like the next bell. And uh, we're going to actually using hibernate. Hibernate and uh, uh, sequence. And then, uh, okay, so, and then my name is Daniel, and then I'm based on Boston, EOS, okay. So let's try to uh, make it two more, uh, like a, here with a uh, job bar, and uh, what are you based on actually? So, yeah, Paris. Paris, okay, and then uh, Randy, where's your base there? Raleigh. Raleigh, oh, I love that Raleigh, okay. So I just save a file and then back to the terminal. And here is open terminal. Yeah, let's try to uh, endpoint here. 80 and hello and a person. Okay, is it, so is it, is it hello person yeah. or oh yeah, nice. Yeah, so we, we gotta enter the three Jopper, Randy and Daniel. And then let's try to like a uh, uh, number one, which is uh, Daniel should be Daniel, and then number three. Uh, should be Randy. So this is all happening. But I just uh, keep changing my code, even create a new class and a method, even a SQL file, and then it's just uh, happening. I don't even change, uh, I don't even uh, rebuild, recompile my application, but still I just got uh, all my database uh, crud capability on my local application, which is stored automatically into my PostSQL container image running on my local machine, but even Quarkus uh, stands up that PostSQL container automatically for me. So this is a really cool stuff for local environment. And then now I'm going to try to deploy this application into uh, OpenShift cluster, which is a Kubernetes. But today I'm going to try to use uh, developer sandbox here. So just in case uh, uh, anyone uh, has uh, heard about uh, the developer sandbox before. So developer sandbox is uh, like a, a free offering uh, for uh, limited day, like 30 days for developer uh, to give some chance to uh, try uh, some kind of Kubernetes experience. 
So when you just go to developersredhead.com, uh, you can just sign up for free and then you will get immediately developer sandbox for next 30 days. And then you can have a, a single OpenShift cluster based on Kubernetes. And then you can have a bunch of the uh, like cool ready workspace, uh, which is a cloud-based ID tool based on Eclipse Che. Uh, we're gonna change it a, a little bit uh, for the soon, like a, a OpenShift dev space in case. So, and also you can deploy application to uh, develop a sandbox for serverless application uh, because we already install OpenShift serverless operator on top of the developer sandbox. So here's my uh, sample application and the sample project, the doh-dev. You can see no resources of mine. When I go to terminal and I just check my, uh, I'm in the right namespace, doh-dev, which is good. So but for that, I'm gonna try to uh, add extension, OpenShift extension which allows developer uh, packaging application and deploy Kubernetes or OpenShift or uh, serverless on uh, Kubernetes Knative. You can select it. So this is the uh, uh, one of the extension and uh, Quarkus feature uh, making you deploy application to Kubernetes. So back to the ID tool. And now I'm gonna uh, go to my uh, where is that? Not here. And then resources file and application properly. Here we go. So here's the empty. I don't even add anything for local environment. So now I'm going to deploy application to Kubernetes, which is a developer sandbox. In order to that, I'm going to add some form your uh, few computation. For example, actual database computation. In order to that, I'm going to add the DB kind and uh, PostSQL, so automatically generated. Uh, okay, I'm gonna add the PostSQL. Let's say the DB database schema name person and database the table name person. And I'm gonna create to, a drop and create a new pod, uh, database. And then I'm gonna use uh, the username. So, by, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, was this a, a VS Code snippet that you used or? Yeah. When, well, as long as you uh, create a Quarkus project with the VS Code or IntelliJ, it automatically generates this computation once you add the Quarkus extension. Very nice. Okay, and then load script, uh, load script. Okay, so SQL load script, we're gonna use SQL. So this is all kind of the, uh, Initialization. Yeah, to yeah. initialize all the database. And then one thing uh, we're going to do that in Kubernetes uh, computation for deploy. So we're going to deploy uh, Kubernetes, yes. And Kubernetes deployment target, which is open ship. Open ship. You could say Kubernetes if you want to deploy vanilla Kubernetes. And then uh, like uh, export. Expose the OpenShift expose, which allows to create a, a router to access your endpoint application by externally. So this is the uh, automatic create router in OpenShift cluster. And then uh, another thing is the uh, deployment, uh, like a client and trust, uh, not the cell. Sorry, the case. Uh, what is that? For the SSL? Yeah, yeah. That's the not is the uh, yeah, that is one. So basically, basically uh the uh, developer sandbox use self certificate uh the SSL TLS termination. So we're gonna set this a true. And then one last thing is uh the open shift. Build strategy, you can use the Docker. Okay, so I think I just set it all. And then uh, back to the here. And then I'm gonna try to use in Parker CLI build. And then uh, I'm gonna skip the unit test because I already uh, just went through my testing scenario using the continuous testing. 
So uh, this uh, behind the scene, the first step, we're gonna packaging application, just normal job file running on JVM. And then uh, it uh, contain a packaging container application. So in the meantime, we actually need to uh, create the, here the uh, database, go to uh, open the console, and then we're gonna deploy PostSQL. Here we go, at Pomo, and then create a new database, and then the service name person, and the username user, and then it's a super secret, just like we set it up our the application property file, and just create that. And then it automatically start new uh, post SQL data, and then just for fun, you can actually add a label, because sometimes you gotta deploy a lot of the application into same namespace. So if you could uh, differentiate the uh, application with some nice icon and or a logo, and then it will be uh, super helpful. You can just figure it out, oh, this is some kind of application uh, database. And then uh, this is the uh, Spring application or Quarkus application, something like that. Okay. So my corpus application uh, just is starting, and then I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, make it bigger. So it's a corpus, and then when you click on uh, the corpus application pod, and then okay, it's uh, somebody's it's working. So let's go back to let me. Okay, so it should be somewhere. Maybe I'm gonna a little bit uh, uh, start. Uh, the create a database. So let me try to restart the, the container here. Just kill it pot, and then it automatically start a new one. One of the beauty of the Kubernetes. And I go back to here. And the own user post scroll. So a process. Okay, back to the here. Oh yeah, the database. Oh yeah, I just did, uh, I'm I'm just uh, putting the wrong uh, the rows. So, uh, that was the database. This is your Quarkus. So go to here. So as you can see, there are low. Just automatically, we just created three data: Daniel, Jafar, and Randy. Mm -hmm. And then when, yeah, when you go back to top row view, let's check it out. The route URL. I just copy the URL and I back to the terminal. And then here we go. And then try to access the hello. And then we got the same user, just like local. And then welcome to Rebel Hour with the Kubernetes Java and Quarkus. And then like a person, you know, we got the oh error ID. Got a person at all. Oh, that's weird. Okay, let's try to take a look at the the bureau. Live demo. Uh, the bell to see that. HTTP cast. Oh, it's weird. Back to here. Any questions so far? Uh, actually, we do have a question. Um, while you're kind of poking around there. Um, okay. ML8 said, uh, are there any plans to implement Quarkus AWS Lambda-like libs for GCP Azure? Thanks. Uh, so you mean uh, just deploy Quarkus application as a serverless on Google and Azure function or something else like a native compilation thing? So, um, we're gonna have to wait for Anmal to clarify his question, perhaps. Okay, so here's the thing. So we actually a uh, couple of uh, extension for Google Cloud Platform and Azure Function. So when you go to Quarkus.io and then uh, go to Guide, and then for example, here's a phone key. So you can see the phone key is one of the Quarkus extension a ROS developer writing once code once and then deploy the same application code to, into multiple serverless platform uh, based on portable serverless function. 
So for example, sometimes you need to rewrite your application to deploy Amazon Lambda because you need to use Amazon Lambda SDK or API. Yeah. However, the Quark Spunky uh, allows you just to write your code once, one time and then automatically deploy the multiple serverless platform Amazon Lambda here and then uh, the K native and Kubernetes and then uh, the Azure function and then uh, Google Cloud Platform as well. The you only thing add. Yeah, the, sorry, uh, Stephanie, can you zoom on Daniel's screen, please? Uh, click on which one? No, uh, I'm just I'll, I'll reorganizing the screen. There yes. we go. Thank you. Oh, yeah, OK. Is that good? Cool. OK. Yes. So as you can see, Azure, Google, and uh, Amazon, only thing you need to do, you uh, set and define uh, your target environment. For example, oh, this is Amazon, this is Google, this is uh, the Azure. And then the rest of them, the corpus will take care of that and deploy the same application with the different uh, packaging stuff or different, the, all the SDK or API that provide the public cloud provider, the Quarkus are wrapping up and abstract that thing automatically, like a create like a, some of the uh, the G file or a batch script under target directory. So this is your, uh, today Quarkus provide uh, some of the uh, Google Cloud and then Azure function and Amazon Lambda thing. Okay, so go back to here. So so, yeah. this, this is really nice because so uh, am I understanding correctly that this is like an abstraction, yeah. uh, like a, a common abstraction uh, to the main serverless providers, which are Lambda, Google Cloud, and uh, Azure Functions. So yeah. you write the same code once, and then you can leverage the the function capabilities of the cloud provider. Yeah. Okay, now here we go. So oh, I think so, yeah, I figured it out. So the Quarkus startup before uh, the post SQL starts because I got some too much talk and then and then before I create the post SQL. Okay, here we go. So I just uh, call the rest endpoint person and then you can see and then like uh, uh, with one parameter and Daniel and this, uh, this wrong parameter and then like uh, uh, the ID three Randy and ID two is a double. So this is exactly the same feature and the same result of what I got in my local file. And then I just deployed the same thing in the Kubernetes and then it's totally working because I already uh, used the uh, container environment. I already some kind of stuff, but in order to have the same capability on your local machine uh, from your local to the remote Kubernetes, you got uh, something, a lot of stuff to set it up on your local and even uh, like a Kubernetes side. But the Quarkus uh, making your life easier, like a developer life easier with the that kind of capability. So one thing, uh, how many times do I have? Maybe I can just real quick to showcase the neighbor comparison at the moment. We well, yeah, have a little bit of time. Okay, so cool. So go back to ID2. Maybe uh, it's some time to uh, neighbor comparison pretty uh, wrong. So, Okay, so maybe maybe I can show another thing uh, is, okay, so I have two things. So one is native comparison. The other one is uh, secure this application. Uh, uh, which one do you prefer? Uh, okay, so. Yeah, gonna... I think go ahead. Yeah, I think go ahead with the, the native compilation. Okay. Okay, and show so, us uh, the, like the startup time or something like that. Okay, yeah. so let me let me just make it simple my application real quick, uh, uh, just for in case to make it faster. Uh, so just go back to the the original application here, and I don't need to uh, SQL file, and then all kind of I don't need to all computation here, and then I don't need to uh, unnecessary uh like a comp uh, dependency okay this is file okay and then back to the terminal and then i just start my local <coughs> environment and let's try to build focus the build and the skip test it's originally just a packaging application as job file and then it yeah. takes some time depends on uh, how much you have a logic and then 
and then just go to target directory, and then here is the uh, Quarkus app directory, you have the uh, runnable Java file here. So, okay. but for running that application, here's my active monitor, and here's a memory, and then like a Java. Okay, I'm gonna make it bigger. So I have already running uh, a few uh, job JVM. So the last one, 62, and the second last one, 155. Okay, so just remember that. And I'm gonna use the Java, the traditional way to run, Java target, and app, and then uh, run. Okay, I just run the application, and then you can see it is running on JVM. And then it takes, uh, almost to less than one second. So if you start maybe second time, it will be maybe a little bit faster. So you can see for almost same thing. So let's just, uh, here we go, uh, uh, less than one second in the JVM. And then back to the active monitor. Now we have a new JVM here, 88.7 megabyte. And then when you go back to here and then try to call uh, the first response time, which is uh, like a really constant mm -hmm. memory. And then it just the uh, same capability and the back to activator monitor. And then it will really show at and then uh, 93 from 8080. So less than 100 megabytes. But just imagine that you package this application like a 88 me memory footprint, but sometimes you need to scale up this application uh, maybe 100, which means uh, so many memory consumption which is why a lot of developers, oh, Java really heavy way on Kubernetes for scalability. So now I'm gonna go to here, I'm gonna stop the runtime and try to patch in one more time and then need it. So the Quarkus application on the Palm XML automatically edited a native profile in the bottom of the uh, Palm XML or Grader as well. This profile allows the Java developer packaging application as a native executable file based on the ahead of time uh, compilation strategy. It takes some time. For example, uh, it will packaging application as a job file, and then it based on using GraalVM and the packaging executable file. And then it takes some time. And then, so for example, I'm I'm using pretty old Mac OS. So sometimes it takes more two, uh, two minutes or three minutes to packaging this application, which is just pretty simple. But when I try to uh, packaging application same app on the new Mac OS, like an M1 process, it, it just takes uh, 30 seconds to finish the uh, packaging application. So it totally depends on the, what kind of machine you are using and then how many uh, application code you are uh, implement to packaging application. So I would say you don't need to packaging native compilation every single time whenever you change the code. So this is yeah. only for production environment. Probably. Yeah, and a specific uh, use case, for example, like a serverless application or a pretty lightweight, like event-driven application, rather than all kind of application. You can also uh, put this like a Maven command line or Quarkus CLI for native compilation as a part of your CICD pipeline, like a Tecton pipeline or a Jenkins pipeline. So you don't need to every single time on your local machine. The reason why I try to showcase this kind of stuff, I just want to show how it works and then uh, what the neighbor compilation looks like. So this is just uh, running on uh, my local and then it only run my local operating system because when you packaging, this application is executable file, which format depends on your operating system. For example, when I create the native executable file based on Mac OS, that file format based on Mac OS, it can be running on Linux operating system, but you can uh, set one configuration file, like a key and value, and it will packaging Linux format. So I just took uh, it took two, little bit more, two minutes. And then when you go to target directory, and now you can see in the executable file, there are no extension. How to run, just, just run that file uh, directly. And when I run that, 
you can see here the native and then the runtime is 22 milliseconds. So previously we almost one second less than uh, one second, like a 900, 90, 950 milliseconds. So we have a 22 millisecond. It's almost 40 times faster than existing Java application. And then when you go back to uh, F monitor and then let's change to runner. And then here we go, 8.7 megabytes. Previously we have 88, it's 10 times less than memory footprint. So go back to here, so let's try to uh, call the same endpoint, let's put UI, and that's the functionality works. And back to here, so it will be increased memory consumption, 9.6. It's still 10 times less than memory footprint. Just imagine that you just deploy the same business application with the native comparison, and then small memory footprint, it always relates to your money like uh, the container image side, which is related to your network bandwidth. Also your uh, like a PVC, like persistent storage, as well as, so sometimes you need to scale out from one to 10 or one to 100. You need to uh, maybe it takes more than five minutes, but it just uh, maybe uh, five seconds, which packaging, which framework you wanna use for your Kubernetes environment. That's what we can call set Kubernetes native Java with the Quarkus. So this is how it works. And then once you deploy this native executable file, so when you add when you add the OpenShift extension I would have showed earlier, and then you can run the same Quarkus uh, CLI or the Maven command line. And the full example Maven command line. So Maven clean package. Package and then you just use the profile uh, native. This is uh, make the same happening. And then it automatically packaging native executable file. And then as long as you add OpenShift extension on Quarks project, it automatically packaging application based on uh, the Docker file when you generate Quarks project. And the source directory, you can have a bunch of Docker file for JVM and native. And then it automatically packaging your application as a container and deploy to OpenShift the cluster. If you set it up like an external container registry, like a Docker Hub, QA.io, or Google Container Registry, it automatically push the container image from local into remote container registry. And then you go back to Kubernetes cluster and then you can define like a YAML file, for example, deployment YAML file, and then it points to uh, external container registry. It will pulling down that container image automatically into your Kubernetes worker node. Okay, that's all I have today. I think so. I'm I'm really running out of time. And just one quick thing. So just uh, here's my Bini URL. I already pushed uh, put in the old kind of demo tutorial, just like I showcased today. Just go to the Bini URL, Bini Daniel TV. There are so many tutorial demo video, and then just feel free. Uh, uh, to add some comment or uh, question, and I'm more than happy to address that your question after this webinar. All Great. right. Well, yeah, Daniel, that was a lot of a lot of information, and uh, and really a great walk through uh, through Quarkus. You know, uh, uh, my team is actually moving a lot of things that we have in our infrastructure to Quarkus, and I I have a much more visceral sense of why they want to do that and the benefits that we're getting out of it now. So. Uh, Thanks for all that. Uh, Jafar, did you have yeah. any closing comments? I think that was amazing, Daniel. Thanks for doing that. And uh, it was all live demo. So it really shows how to get from like very simple project to extending and adding new capabilities. And we see that Focus makes that a lot easier with all the accelerators uh, there. Uh, you are a very clever guy, but uh, uh, Quarkus helps a lot. So thanks a lot for doing that. It was really uh, amazing. Uh, and stuff. I'll add one last thing, uh, which I've posted in the chat, is that uh, we actually have a certification. I've, occasionally I have to pull that out, that I, I do run the cert program at Red Hat. And uh, we have uh, the Red Hat Certified Cloud Native Developer Certification, which is, in fact, built around Quarkus. And uh, we have training to support that. So if you're somebody who is new to this world or maybe you're experienced in the Quarkus world and you want to be able to 
have that gold ring, uh, definitely uh, take a look on redhat.com. Follow those links that I posted in the chat. Uh, Daniel, any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Oh, uh, yeah, you guys all guys doing great. And uh, thanks for addressing the question. And then uh, once again, thanks for having me. And then I'm, I will be everywhere. So you can reach out to me directly, like ubiquitous. Twitter and the LinkedIn and the YouTube channel. I mean, I'm, I'm already happy to meet you and uh, talk about the Quarkus and Cloud Native stuff. Thanks okay. for having me once again. All right. Well, thank you, Daniel. Thanks. And everybody, uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and share. And let everybody know we're here so that you know, great guests like uh, Daniel O continue coming and visiting and giving us demos of all these technologies. So with that, thank you for joining, and we will see you next time.